Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for the month of August 2020. I'm Hayley and this month I'm going to be talking to you about the planet Venus, the Perseids meteor shower, how to spot the Andromeda galaxy and the constellation of the month which is Perseus. Let's begin by taking a look at the moon and you can see that on the 1st of August the moon appears very close to the planet Jupiter and if we put a binocular view on you can see that we have a waxing gibbous moon on the 1st and you can view it in the same field of view as the planet Jupiter in a pair of binoculars. If we move to the 3rd of the month we will find that we have a full moon and new moon this month occurs on the 19th. A activity that you could try this month is sketching the moon over the course of the month on as many of the as many of the clear nights as you can um, to see if you can sketch how the phase of the moon changes through the month um, and you can also add some shading to um, show any of the other features that you can see um, such as the lunar seas and the lunar craters as well. Taking a look at the planets next, if we zoom out and you can see that Jupiter and Saturn are still prominent and they're rising quite early now so you'll be able to see them for most of the night and also Mars and you can see here that we're on the 3rd of August at the moment that Mars is rising um, just before midnight um, and you'll be able to view Mars for the rest of the night after that. And I want to talk in a little bit more detail about Venus this month because Venus reaches what we call greatest western elongation on the 13th and what that means is that it's a good time to view it because it will appear at its highest in the morning sky. So any time around the middle of the month is a really good time to view Venus. And if we just move into the morning sky. Um, so you can see here we are just after half past three in the morning. Venus has risen in the constellation of Gemini. Um, we're now on the 14th of August and if we, let's take a look at how it would seem in a pair of binoculars, you can view it in a pair of binoculars um, and if you have a small telescope and we zoom in then you can take a look at the phase of Venus and you can see that it's roughly half illuminated um, at this point in the middle of August. Moving on now to what should be the highlight of the month for the night sky in August, which is the Perseids meteor shower. And that is going to peak on the night of the 11th of August, going into the morning of the 12th. So if I take us to just before midnight on the 11th, and if we look to the northeast, you can see here we have the constellation of Perseus. And you can see that the bright star Capella has just risen above the horizon at around midnight. So you can use that to kind of help you to see that you're in roughly the right area. You don't need to be looking directly at the constellation of Perseus to see the meteors. Um, as long as you are looking roughly in the right direction, then you are hopefully going to see some meteors. Um, the meteor shower itself runs from July the 17th until August the 24th so if you are out observing during that period then you may see a few meteors anyway and um, if you go out on the night of the peak then you may see up to 60 meteors an hour so um, hopefully every minute or so you're going to be seeing a meteor and um, the way that I like to observe meteor showers is find a nice dark location, as dark as you can. Um, get yourself away from any sources of light pollution, so that includes things like looking at your phone or shining a bright torch. Let your eyes become nice and adapted to the dark. Um, so spend about 20 minutes making sure your eyes are adapted to the dark. 
um, and then find yourself a comfortable chair or a sun lounger can be quite good because it enables you to recline back um, and just watch and see how many meteors you can spot. Um, if you're really lucky, you might spot a really bright meteor, sometimes known as a fireball, um, and they can be very memorable if you do manage to spot one of those. The meteor shower is caused by the Earth passing through a field of debris that has been left behind by Comet Swift Tuttle, um, and those pieces of debris are usually around the size of grains of sand um, and they are hitting our atmosphere at over 100,000 miles an hour um, and we see them burn up as meteors. Um, a nice activity that you can do while watching the meteor shower is you can um, do yourself a rough sketch of the night sky, so of the uh, constellations that you can see and then every time you see a meteor just sketch onto your piece of paper where um, the path of the meteor that you've seen and um, at the end of the night have a look and see if you can trace those meteor paths back to the constellation of Perseus um, which is where what we call the radiant of the meteor shower or where the, the meteors appear to originate from um, and hopefully you'll be able to see that your meteors that you've spotted appear to originate from Perseus as well. Let's talk about our constellation of the month now and as we've been talking about the Perseids meteor shower I thought this would be a good time to have the constellation of Perseus as our constellation of the month. And we've talked already about using the Bright Star Capella to help you locate Perseus and the rough area that you need to look at for the Perseids meteor shower. If you are struggling to locate Capella, another way to find Perseus is to use the constellation of Cassiopeia. Um, so if you locate the Big Dipper and use any of the stars in the Big Dipper's tail, draw a line through one of those stars and the pole star that will take you to Cassiopeia and then you're roughly in the right region of sky then um, to find the constellation of Perseus. Now in mythology Perseus was the hero and he was son of Zeus and he slayed the Gorgon Medusa whose gaze turned men into stone. Perseus also rescued the princess Andromeda from a sea monster and later married her and the galaxy that is named for Andromeda appears close to Perseus in the night sky. You can see Andromeda depicted here and the constellation Andromeda over here and if you would like to have a go at looking for the Andromeda galaxy then you can do so as long as you are in a fairly dark location. The most important thing when searching for the Andromeda Galaxy, if you're looking with your naked eye, is to be in a dark location. Um, and to find it, you can use the trick that we just used of going from the Big Dipper to the Pole Star to Cassiopeia. Um, and then if you can locate the Great Square of Pegasus, then the constellation of Androm Andromeda is joined on to the great square of Pegasus. And you can see here there is a fuzzy blob um, in the constellation of Andromeda, and that is the Andromeda galaxy. And it is the most distant object that you can see with your naked eye. So if you do manage to spot it, um, you will be looking at something that is two million light years away and with your naked eye it looks like a dim fuzzy star if you are in a dark site. If you have a pair of binoculars then you should be able to see that it has an elliptical shape and it is huge. The Andromeda galaxy is about five times the size of the full moon in the sky. Um, so if you're using a telescope, then you want to use a low powered eyepiece, have a low magnification so that you can see as much of the galaxy as possible. Um, definitely try with a pair of binoculars first if you have a pair, because it does look quite brilliant in a pair of binoculars. 
um, and the astronomer Edwin Hubble, who now has the famous Hubble t uh, Space Telescope named after him, um, he was able to use Cepheid variable stars to determine that this spiral nebula, as it was known then, was actually too far away to be part of our own Milky Way galaxy, and that provided the first real evidence that there were galaxies beyond our own. So that brings me to the end of our night sky tour for the month of August and I will be back in a month's time to talk to you about what you can see in the night sky for September.